have us take a look at is let's actually use CodePad to create a new car, just like we were doing in the test code. Um, but I want to show you something interesting about what happens when we try to print it. So in CodePad here, let's declare a variable of type car. Oop, that is very small. Let me make that a lot bigger. That's better. So let's do a variable of type car called test car, and we'll assign it the reference that's returned from saying new car. So that's the exact same line of code that we had um, in each of our, our test methods. So then we can go ahead and hit enter. And now we've, we've created that new car object. We've assigned the reference to test car. Let's print out let's, uh, the value of the variable test car. So system.out.println test car. And we need all of our semicolons and everything. Make some room here for this other stuff. And that's what's printed to the terminal. Yours will be slightly different and won't necessarily be the same thing after the at sign. Um, but my question for you is what, what's being printed? Any ideas why that's on our terminal window? Yeah, that is the actual reference. So remember, as we've done this stuff with the post-it notes and the sheets of paper, we've been making up our own address. We've been making up our own references and just writing them in, on our post-it notes. This is the actual reference um, for the new car object that was, was created. And different computers may have different values um, because it all depends upon the computer's memory. Um, where it chooses to find sp space for that, that new car object. But this is actually the reference. So, you know, I could write this on my post-it note. I could write this in the upper right corner of the white sheet of paper, um, which is kind of cool. While, while it's kind of cool that, hey, we saw a reference, it's not very useful. If we print out a car, it'd be a lot more useful if we knew, like, what is its fuel efficiency? How, much, how many gallons of gas are in the tank? What is the VIN? Um, so what we're going to do for just a moment today is we're going to add another method to our car class that will actually print useful stuff instead. Okay. So go ahead and open up the car class. And let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to add um, a final method to this class and so we'll do our java.comment header, so slash star star enter to make sure it's a, uh, the comment that will show up in the documentation. And this method is going to, this method returns a string that describes the state of this car. Notice that I continue to use this rather intentionally, right? I'm, I'm trying to reinforce that the, the reserved word this references the current object. Um, this, we're going to have at return because this method is going to return. And I'm just going to, again, this is where it's a little bit repetitive, but it looks really good in the documentation. It's going to return a string that describes the state of this car. And what our method is going to look like, it's public. It returns a string. And the name in the method is toString. And exactly how this works, we won't really get to until next semester. But for this semester, if we create a method that returns a string that's called toString, exactly like that, and takes no parameters, whenever we pass a reference to um, an object to the like to system.out.println, it will automatically call this method for us and print what we return as a string instead. Now to be clear, this method isn't going to print anything. This method is going to build up a string and return that string. System.out.println will then print it to the terminal. So we're not printing here. We're just building up a string here. But this method will be automatically called now on whenever we pass a reference to a car to like system.out.println. So we're going to use our string concatenation operator just to build up a long string that has all of the values for the attributes of a car. 
So I'm going to say create a local variable of type string str equals. Um, and we could format this however we want. I'm going to have like the name of the attribute. And then I'll use the string concatenation operator, the plus symbol. And I'll say this.getvin. And then to that, I'll add fuel efficiency. And I'll concatenate this dot fuel efficiency. And then after that, we'll do, oh, I want to include the units too. So that's in units of miles per gallon. And then we'll do fuel and tank. And we'll concatenate this dot get fuel and tank. And that has units of gallons. Unlike Python, um, or easier than Python, in Java we can have a single statement over multiple lines of code because the Java compiler knows the statement ends when it gets to the semicolon. Okay. So this is way too much to type on a single line in our editor, so that's why I broke it up like I did, I did here. Now that we built up this string, we simply can say return str. One thing I want to point out is that um, I'm being explicit with my use of this. I think that's very important. Because um, again, we, we want to call the getVin method. On which object do we call it? Well, we call it on this object. Remember, that this references the object whose method is currently running. So if we call the toString method on testCar, this, the value of this, is the same as the value of testCar. They both refer to that car object we created. Best practices says within a class, if there are methods available to get the value we're looking for, we should call those methods. So notice that I call the getVin method instead of just saying this.vin. Either would work, but it's considered better practice to call the method. Now in the case of fuel efficiency, there is no accessor method for the fuel efficiency, so I have to directly reference the instance variable instead. So get vin and get fuel and tank are methods. We wrote them earlier. We have parentheses after them. Fuel efficiency is not a method. It's just the instance variable. Um, but there is no accessor method, so we, we have to use that instead. All right. So click on the compile button. Make sure it all compiles. Let's switch back. Um, and we're going to create another test car. So car test car 2 equals new car. I'm not sure if I can reuse the same one or not. And then we'll do system.out.println test car2. And that's much more useful. We never set the VIN, so that's why there's no VIN there. But we can see the fuel efficiency. We can see the fuel in tank. We, if we then started calling some of those other methods, like set VIN, and add fuel, we can see that that information is now updated and reflected and what gets printed. So in general, it's a really good idea to define a two-string method for your class because it makes it a lot easier for people if they print a reference, print, print your class object that they could then see, oh, here's the values of all the, the attributes that I care about. So in general, we'll, we'll write two-string methods for, for our classes.